Over the years, Pokemon creators have come up with unique and fascinating challenges in order to give replay value to the beloved Pokemon games. None was more popular than the Pokemon Nuzlocke. A simple rule is added, if a Pokemon dies, it must be released, or put into a death box if you want to stare at your mistakes. From this stemmed a new challenge called the Hardcore Nuzlocke. So in the Hardcore Nuzlocke, three simple rules were added. You get no healing items in battle, and the level cap was the gym leader's next highest level Pokemon, and you had to play on set mode, that wasn't mentioned here. This rule set was really popularized by the Pokemon YouTuber Pokemon Challenges. Yes, we used his allegations picture, I thought that'd be hilarious. So, I came up with the idea of the Extreme Hardcore Nuzlocke, basically the same rules as a Hardcore Nuzlocke except your level cap has to be to the next gym leader's lowest level Pokemon. We're also not allowed to edge. No, we're not talking about that kind of edging, gentlemen. Alrighty, without further ado, my name is Xander, and let's get into how I beat Pokemon Black with an Extreme Hardcore Nuzlocke. We asked the same old question, which starter do we pick from Mommy Jupiter? There's no way I just wrote this in the script, what the f- Alrighty, we pick Snivy and our room is completely trashed. You would think we wouldn't tell my mom about this, but here we are telling my mom about it. We then go to check in on Bianca because she's ready to go on her Pokemon- mm, Maybe she's- we'll get back to her later. Alright, we meet up with N finally before we get into our first gym fight. Alrighty. So the first gym fight is interesting to say the least. The big gimmick with his team is that he wants to set up work up. Work up increases your attack and special attack by one stage. But real quick, let's get into why I picked my starter. I picked Snivy because of Coil. In my opinion, Coil is probably one of the best setup moves ever, having plus one defense, plus one attack, and plus one accuracy. I'm really going to be relying on setup moves, especially in the Elite Four. And then Simipore, that's the monkey I get from. Picking Snivy, I'm sorry, I'm sounding slow as hell. <laughs> uh, access to early Scald, the ability to burn your opponents is super, super crucial. Now, as you can see with this gym, this plan is simple. We basically want to set up a 1v1 with our monkey. Now, we finally send out our monkey and we're able to 1v1 it. So, something of note here, obviously the gym leaders change based on what monkey you get, but because I got the monkey in that route, I'm not allowed to catch like a Muna or anything from that route. I'm only doing one encounter per route, gift Pokemon included. Alrighty, Lenora. Lenora's tough, okay? Let's get into it. She's a run killer. Herdier with takedown this early in this game can be deadly, as it likely can one-shot your baby Pokemon with a crit. In fact, it may be able to one-shot your baby Pokemon without a crit. So, let's talk about some encounters that we got. At this point, I got a Blitzel in the Timber, so between Paralysis and Staff Fighting, I thought I would be fine. But, as you can tell, it's not going so well. So one of the big problems I have is that Servine's damage output, especially without setup moves like Growth or Coil, I wasn't able to set up Growth here in fear of dying to take down immediately. I live with 1 HP, I probably shouldn't have risked the crit there. I'm playing very, very ultra aggressive for no reason at all. But right here I decided to switch into Pampor. The reason why I switched into Pampor is because of all the Pokemon that I have on my team, I thought that Pampor could potentially outspeed the Herdier and deal a lot of damage. I forgot I had Water Gun though, and Water Gun does nothing. Fortunately for me, Leer misses. This is because of Leaf Tornado. Leaf Tornado has a chance to lower your opponent's accuracy, which is absolutely incredible. So I end up getting very, very lucky there. So from here, it's kind of just spam Water Gun until the Hurrier gets taken down. We avoid another crit. This is a key. I actually lost two of my runs to Lenora. I'm gonna keep, give you guys some insight on my past previous attempts. But here comes the Watchog. So Retaliate is a 70 base power normal move, and one of the big problems that stems with this is that it doubles your damage if you're using it right after a Pokemon's fainted. I switch into Timber, planning to sacrifice it, but it goes for Crunch. I think because of the HP I was at, I'm pretty sure Watchhog just decided to kill me with Crunch, which is very, very fortunate for me. I go for Rock, for rock Smash, not Rock Slide, jeez, another typo in my script here. <laughs> I go into my Herdier, so the big thing with Herdier is I thought I could take two Retaliates, however right here I get Hypnosis, I get put to sleep. So when determining what play was best for me, I kinda, I considered the Blitzel switch, but I basically I was like, you know what, I need a Rock Smash. I need to, this is my best play, I need to try to wake up, and luckily I wake up, I go for the Rock Smash and I actually get the critical hit to take out the Watchog. 
So I barely beat Lenora and it was a really scary fight. Oh, here's this useless stone. I wonder if that's going to be ever useful. Alrighty, so we're in the desert right now. And the reason why we're in the desert is because we can get Darumaka or, or Sandile. Here I get Darumaka. It makes Berg so much easier as we're going to get right into this Berg fight. Alrighty, I know this should be a Swoobat, okay? I may have forgotten that friendship evolutions exist. However, it doesn't matter. It takes out the world beat easily. For Dwebble, I go ahead and I... No, you may notice here that I don't have a semi-pore. The reason why, and I'm pretty sure this is the reason why, I don't have Scald yet. And if you delay your monkey evolution, you can get Scald, Seed Bomb, or Le or um, or Flame Burst, depending on which one you pick. So I'm pretty sure I didn't have Scald at this current moment. So that's why I've delayed my evolution there. Fire Fang's gonna easily take out the Liviani, getting me the third gym badge. Wasn't even worth talking about. We get to Nimbasa and we get a bike. Beautiful. And then we're going to go on a Ferris wheel with N. I'm not going to lie, I was a little creeped out by N here. I don't know what he's going for. But he came out strong. He's like, man, I'm the king. And you know, that probably turned on some of the girls. I can't lie. And then I'm just kind of like talking with him. And then, oh, we're in a battle. Oh, Alrighty. Well, Simipore is going to absolutely destroy N's team with Scald. Takes out the Sandile, here comes the Darumaka, takes it out with Scald. I don't know why N did that. So, Sigilip is a big problem for this team. So, basically, the Scraggy, it's, it's kind of just here, honestly. Well, at least that's what I thought. <laughs> uh, Scraggy's going to go ahead and get a f uh, Faint attack in, and then it's going to swagger my entire team, forcing me to kind of switch around so I'm not playing through Confusion. But let's talk about N Sigilith. This is one of the huge um, run threats in the beginning of the game. It can easily take out two or three of your Pokemon. The reason why is because Sigilith is stupid fast. And then Air Cutter has a high crit rate. So right here, Sigilith comes out. I decide here that I'm going to switch into Lyper. Because even though Lyper really just sucks as a Pokemon, as we finally do it, Lyper sucks as a Pokemon. However, because we have a dark type move, I have to go for it, and we do outspeed, and we get the crit and don't kill the Sigilith. However, we live one more air cutter and take out the Sigilith. Alrighty. Now we have Elisa. Is it just me, or do you all have a massive crush on her? I can't lie. Elisa is just fucking hot, bro. She is just so beautiful. I do not understand what Pokemon was on when it came to designing her. I don't know. I, she's a freaking model, okay? Alright. We brought this Blitzel. The reason why we brought Blitzel is because this is a motor drive Blitzel, meaning that it doesn't get affected by Volt Switch, making it a pretty decent Amolga counter. Right there, it tried to pursue me. <laughs> luckily, I luckily the paralysis saved me there. This fight takes a very long time to do, and this is going to be a lesson that I'm going to teach you guys. Sometimes you can play way too safe, and when you play way too safe, you actually are playing riskier sometimes. So right here, I go ahead and I switch out the Live Hurt again. I'm gonna go for fake out just to get some free damage off but one of the big problems i'm running into is that unfortunately with the team i have it's kind of it's kind of rough outside of sandile when it comes to switching especially because i'm really scared that volts of volt switching just back and forth right here for the sandile flame charge is not gonna crit me luckily meaning i can dig and i can finally kill the striker so here comes the last pokemon on Wolga. I know it's not going to go for Volt Switch, so I go ahead and I switch out here. I switch out, and it hits me with Pursuit, and Pursuit, it doesn't kill me. Here comes a Volt Switch right here. I'm able to hit it with a couple Retaliates, and then here's where I play Ultra Ultra Safe. I should have just went for the Retaliate there, but I go for the Motor Drive, and then I'm going to decide right here, I'm going to make a really, really, really stupid play right here. I go for the I go for the spark. It doesn't work. I get fully paralyzed. I get fully paralyzed. And here comes the aerial ace. Here comes two aerial aerial aces. Jeez, I can't talk. I ended up having to risk two crits there. The reason I say that sometimes playing too safe is an issue is because I should have avoided the crit with the hurtier over the girder. Honestly, I was more willing to lose hurtier at that moment. But here comes Clay. And with that in and with the last fight in mind, I'm going to play this a little bit more aggressive. So, right here, 
I'm looking at Excadrill, it's the biggest threat on his team, and I go ahead and I just go for the Scald Burn. I think it's the smart choice to go for. Unfortunately, I don't get it. Right here, I basically kind of determined that I needed to get a Sacrifice in here. I ended up going into Liper because I don't need it anymore. I needed a good switch in the Girder here. Uh, so I just go for Home Claws. The reason why I did that is because I didn't want to put into Heal Range by accident. So I go in, and I get Rock Slide flinched. Now we're in trouble. Now I have to sacrifice a second Pokemon, and I decide that it's going to be Servine. Luckily, he goes for Bulldoze, which really saves me. Now I can switch into Zebstrika on the Slash, and it can kill with Flame Charge. I also had to risk a Slash crit there. However, his last Pokemon is Palpitoad, and I can just simply go into Servine, and I can absolutely destroy it with a Leaf Blade. It has no chance at living. Wait, this is Leaf Tornado, my bad. We actually go for Mega Drain just to get some health back, avoiding the crits here. But we do clean up the Palpito finally, getting us the fifth gym badge, and we're on to Charstone Cave. All right, in Charstone Cave, we run into N, and he's kind of just chilling. So we're like, you know, you're chilling. Let's just go ahead and destroy him real quick. Crocorock is going to open up against the Bulldore. I went ahead and tried to break the Sturdy with Crunch. However, I should have done Crunch into Dig. So here comes a Joltik, and you would think I would remember that a Spider is a bug type, but apparently I forgot that Spiders are a bug type. So I almost lose my Crocorock there. That's one of those instances of playing a little too aggressive, and also just not paying attention. I completely forgot. Darmaka cleans up N, and here comes Skyla trying to get into the Mile High Club. Uh, so before this Skyla fight, I had to go up to that stupid tower to ring her bell. Yeah. <laughs> and then we ran into a bunch of walls. Yeah, fun. You notice how I'm not talking over that Swoobat kill because, guys, like, you, you see it. Dark-type versus Psychic-type, easy win for me. Alright, here comes the Strike. it's gonna go for a Spark on the Swana. So I think that this is just gonna be a free fight, however, I was dead wrong. Here comes Unpheasant, and it's gonna hit me with a Leer, and I'm like, okay, I'm fine, right? And then it hits me with a Quick Attack, and then it crits me. That's honestly my fault, I'm not gonna lie. So right here I go in the Croc Rock thinking I could just kill with a crunch and then here comes an air slash and it flinches me. You gotta be kidding me. So now I gotta sacrifice a Pokemon and I ultimately decide that it's gonna be Girder. The reason why is because I don't need it anymore. Uh, compared to the rest of my Pokemon, I need them a little bit more. Here comes the Simipore, I'm gonna hit it with a Scald. Luckily, I could take two and take out Skyla for the sixth badge. All right. We're just kind of going through boss rushes right now. We're going to get a time where we're going to kind of slow this down a little bit. But Bryson, I mean, the Ice Ninja, it's going to be super easy. We're just going to use our Manitan. Right here, I should have gone for Flare Blitz right here, but I don't end up killing. So now I'm swaggered. So now I'm kind of stuck and I switch into Semi Poor so I can tank its uh, Ice type moves. However, it's just going to heal. I go for Scald here to just go for the burn and I do get the burn and the crit. The crit really doesn't matter, quite frankly. The burn mattered a lot more, although it did just go for Swagger. But here comes a Slash. Yeah, Bryson's kind of down bad, I can't lie. I once again go for Fire Punch here. Fire Punch doesn't take out the Bear Tick. I'm just trying to take it out, and I finally do. And here comes a Cryogonal. This is one of the most useless Ice types ever. And I finally take this thing out with a Fire Punch, giving me the 7 Gym Badge. And now we get to head to Dragon Spiral Tower, where we can get a little bit of a break. So, in this break, I think we kind of just need to talk about um, what's been going on. Uh, I haven't been uploading. So, I once again lost my Emerald Kaizo save file. I, I seriously don't know how the hell I lost it. And honestly, I lost the Emerald Kaizo save file. And honestly, I was just kind of broken from there. I didn't want to do anything after that. I was like, seriously, this is the second time. This is the second time I have failed to finish an Emerald Kaizo run. And it's like, bro, I don't even want to play through it again. <laughs> like, it's just honestly aggravating. So what what I think happened, I went a couple weeks without playing Emerald Kaizo. And then I went to my recent ROMs to try to look for my save file, and it's not there. And then I go to my Emerald Kaizo, and I try to load it, and it's not loading. So I had to delete Emerald Kaizo, and then bring it back. And then I tried to use my backup save file, and that shit wouldn't load. Honestly, it's just kind of fucking rough. Sorry for my cursing, but yeah, uh, this, it was just really, really, really tough. And I tried to play Radical Red to kind of like 
you know, get me over it, you know, I'll play some Radical Red and it will make me feel better and then I didn't want to play that. So I just completely lost motivation, but I am back, I'm trying, That I, I, guess I, I guess you could say I'm trying my hardest to do this, however, it's just tough because one of the big things that really, really sucked about losing the Kaizo save file was I was at the Elite Four, ready to stream it and everything. But I took a couple weeks off because of college midterms and then I lost it. <sighs> Man. Well, at the very, very least, the very, very least, we're back now. I think I need to stick to some Pokemon challenges, some tier lists. I got a new mic, by the way. I don't know if you guys can tell. Um, I don't know how much of a difference it's gonna make, quite frankly. However, I was in Discord and a lot of people were like, damn, your voice is crisper, so it must be making a difference. <laughs> so that's a good thing. Um, honestly, something that I'll say right now is like, you guys should leave down video ideas for me because I think I want to do the extreme hardcore nuzlocke for a lot of these games. The problem is in the previous games, for example, Pokemon Platinum, Aaron's lowest level Pokemon is like 49, and then Cynthia's highest level Pokemon is 62, so it'd be impossible. It'd be like dang near impossible for me to go in with a team of level 49s and win with no healing items. So I probably have to figure out something for that. I might just have to do lowest level for each individual Elite Four member. That might be an option. Uh, or maybe I could do the lowest level of uh, the lowest level of uh, Lucian's team because I know a lot of people, including me. We kind of just go for like the highest level of Lucian's team as the normal level cap, so maybe I'll do that, but honestly, if you have watched this all the way through, I greatly appreciate you. I actually have a surprise for everybody. A lot of these videos don't have a lot of live comment them, or they do, it's from a live stream. I didn't live stream this, but I still wanted that live commentary aspect to it. My entire Elite Four is actually live comm, so we're almost there. Spoilers, we actually do make the Elite Four in this run. Surprise, surprise. Um, but yeah, I think we're finally done with Dragon Spiral Tower. So we got the useless Lightstone finally. And here's Bianca. This is our final fight with Bianca. As you can tell, we haven't been going through many of the rival fights. That's because the rivals are freaking useless. I said it. They're useless. The battles are stupid. I don't know why they did this, but the battles are absolute crap. None of them are difficult. However, I thought this one, it's the final one. Let's at least play it. She'll probably give me some trouble. Pharaoh C completely walls this uh, Statlin, which is incredible. I don't have the Rocky Helmet. That's another thing I did a horrible job at in this playthrough. I grabbed like no items. Like none of the items I ended up grabbing. And honestly, it kind of ended up biting me in the ass a little bit. Uh, spoiler for that. So basically, um, I may or may not have hacked in some, some items. Look, it, it, it was me go out and get them and waste time or hack them in. And I elected for hacking them in. Now, here's the deal. I say I hacked them in, but you guys got my back, right? Even though I said I hacked them in, I clearly, clearly grinded for them, okay? I grinded for them. Um, anyways, this fight, why do the rivals have four Pokemon? And why are there so many rival fights? They're all dumb. They all, they, like, they're never hard. <laughs> like, none of them are ever hard. Like, why is this even a thing? So, we finally, with the Musharna, we're just going for a couple crunches. We're trying to take this thing out, but it's just spamming the fence scroll, wasting my precious time, and then it's gonna hypnosis me. This is the only trainer in between me and Drayden, and she's just wasting my time. I ended up just going for Surf, taking it out finally. We can get the Drayden finally. So Drayden, you would think that a gym leader with Dragon Dance would be deadly, but it's not. First off, I ended up getting a Cub Chew and a Vanillish, uh, so. I ended up evolving, evolving the Vanilla into Vanilla, and then I evolved the Cup Shoot into Bear Tick, which makes this fight super, super easy. Setting up Dragon Dance and going for Dragon Tail apparently, like, made sense to Game Freak. Drayden was free. Alright, the last Sharon fight before we finally get into the Lycom Elite 4. So, 
Fairtick is going to beat the Umphezant. However, I always forget that it leads with Umphezant. I always, always, always think that Sharon leads with Life Heart. I don't know why that is, but I always make that mistake. But Umphezant's going to try to get a Razor Wind off of me. So it finally does. End up killing it with a Slash. So here comes Embor. Now, Embor actually ends up being a lot tougher than I thought. I was like, oh, switching to Semipore, easy kill. That Flamethrower crit did way too much damage. That did way too much damage. Then Takedown's gonna take out my Semipore. It's okay, I didn't need Semipore for the Elite Four anyways. Here comes Croc Rock, hit it with a Bulldoze. Next up is Simi Sage. I'm gonna go ahead and switch out into my Darmanitan. And this is also something that I was like, oh, this is gonna be easy. There's no way, right? And then here comes a Seed Bomb, and it would've killed me with a crit. So luckily I don't get crit there. And finally is Lipard. And Lipard's just gonna stall me. Once again, why do they have four Pokemon? Like, why? Why do they have four Pokemon? I accidentally went for Force Palm over Drain Punch there. Don't worry about it. But yeah, why? Why? If you gave him six Pokemon and made him actually difficult, maybe these rival fights would be worth going over. But yeah, I'm switching to the like, hum. Thank you all, and I'll see you all next time. We just need to get this thing out of here. That's a beautiful, that's beautiful. All right, Mummy's gonna go ahead and get rid of our Intimidate. Okay, Shadow Ball. I clicked the wrong move. Oh my god. Hopefully Dig kills. It might be able to from that range. Beautiful. I didn't click the wrong move. I just wanted to prolong this a little bit, you know? Give it some suspense. Hopefully Leaf Blade kills. Or we get a lucky crit. Beautiful. Didn't even need the crit. So, Shadow Ball should kill. Now, because of my plus, my minus special attack nature, I had to use a Ghost Gem here. And... That's going to guarantee the kill here on the Chandelure. I may have been able to kill it without it, but I'm not taking that chance. By the way, I didn't use the Pokemon Calculator going into this. I probably should have. Because for the opportunity of getting the high crit. Beautiful. Literally called it too. Literally called it too. As we get through Chantal, that was easy. She's dumbstruck, boys. Alright, we're just going to Drain Punch this thing twice and get this thing out of here. We don't care about sand attack because um, we're just going to hit through it. Yeah, we don't care. We're just going to hit through it and kill it anyways. We're about a high roll here. I'm going to really hope we didn't just hit a high roll. That'd be really bad. Okay, good. I mean, me personally, little girl on girl action. It's never a bad thing. Beautiful. That should take out the Lyper. We should have bulldozed first so we could be faster and then use the dig. Bop. I can't believe I just said bop. And I didn't even time it properly. I wasn't even trying to. Not think about it. If I was going to do that, I should have timed that properly. Like, what was I? What was I even thinking? Oh, you're going to heal? Really? I don't have time for you. We already won. We already know I won. Beautiful. I deserve that crit. So this Shadow Ball is going to absolutely destroy this Reuniclus. It has no chance at living. We might even be overkilling it. A Shadow Ball with a spell tag might have killed anyways but you know what we gotta be a little fancy with it okay here comes a musharna so with musharna we need to switch we're gonna go into crocodile now this thing does not have a gem on it because you know i have to give caitlin some mercy here here comes crocodile so basically it's gonna tank a shadow ball here and then it's gonna go for crunch Beautiful. Here comes a crunch. I'm sorry, I'm eating a Starburst currently. Obviously eating the pink one, the best one. Mm. Still good, man. I deserve that. Alright. I'm just going to continue the crunch. We're going to have to speed this up here a little bit because I don't have time to wait around for Caitlyn to finally get her act together. And that's a one-shot, by the way. Yeah, I actually didn't think Crunch would one-shot, so... Dang, we actually missed the range on the first one, which actually sucks. <laughs> now. 
I know Flare Bliss will kill, and I don't think Fire Punch would, so we gotta put a Fire Gem on that shit. So this is gonna kill with ease. Sheer Force, Darmanitan. Guys, it didn't kill. You've done your service, Darmanitan. Thank you. And we actually need to avoid a crit right here with Chandelure. With the crit or else this is gonna be... Okay, this is about to turn into a fail. <laughs> man... You would have never seen this video, man. I would have had to restart the game. <laughs> you would have never seen this. <laughs> man. In reality, I'm just playing Clash of Clans. I didn't want to tell you guys. By the way, you guys want to see my Clash of Clans? Um, I have three different accounts. We're actually about to go into war. Um, right here, the simple plan is to lead off with Superior. And we're going to get up five, six coils. And we're going to sweep. And we're not going to get crit. Alrighty, boys. Time to start... Mass destruction. That's it actually hits the stone. It's just not gonna crit me, guys. Don't even worry. That health bar is gonna take 11 damage. <laughs> I'm not worried. Get absolutely destroyed. Alrighty, Superior's at the level 49 now. Beautiful. Because me and Shao, I'm not even scared of this thing. You turn for all I care. Yeah, thanks. That's a free kill. No crit, by the way. We might as well be sh shell armor the way we avoiding these crits. <laughs> we might as well be. This thing has sturdy, so we won't be able to kill it. Highly unfortunate. We're going to go for the Giga Drain right here. So we're going to gain back some health. And then we're going to go ahead and Leap Blade right after. So basically, we're going to be up to like 143 health, hopefully, after this. That way, we're going to be able to live as probably another Stone Edge crit, honestly. Because this thing is likely going to Stone Edge. What a high crit chance that, you know, it's not going to crit us. You know, we have Shell Armor. Shell Armor Superior. You guys heard it here first. Yeah. This is absolutely the reason why we picked Superior, by the way. This is beautiful right here. This is that no skill, spam a bunch of setup moves, and then win. And then win. That, that That's what this is all about. Absolutely beautiful. This Kong Kelder is about to die. Uh, like, I feel bad for this thing. This thing is about to get sliced and diced. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. Last Pokemon is going to be that mean shout, and we're going to fucking destroy it. I'm not even going to lie. This commentary has been incredible. I'll use my last bit of strength, he says. Here's that jump kick that's not going to crit me. <laughs> Cocky as fuck. You guys got to love this. You guys got to love it. As we're finally going to take this thing out. Now... We are on to N, though. So. N is going to be a problem. We avoid the Giga Impact, which is actually incredible. Take a dig. The thing about Bulldoze is it did a pretty good amount. Perfect, dig takes it out. Beautiful. We're going to be able to scout. Will it be... Will it be Ice Beam or will it be Focus Blast? It's going to be Blizzard. Okay, so that's Blizzard. That is good to know. So the Zorark is still an option. The Light Screen just wore off. We're going to hit it with a Flame Burst. I wish I had Flamethrower. But unfortunately, we do not. And it looked like it would have killed if we had it. I'm fully expecting the Zorark to come out now. I'm just going to hope that this is a Water move. Nice. It's Waterfall. Beautiful. And we're not messing around with this thing. We're going to go right for the Giga Drain. Most people like the setup on the Caric on the Caracosta, but um, the big problem is, number one, uh, Stone Edge could crit, and I've already danced around that too many times. And secondly, because it doesn't have Sturdy anymore because of the Hail, I'll be able to one-shot it with Giga Drain. Yeah, there there's a Flamethrower. We are Rivalry. I don't know how Rivalry works when they don't have a gender. As we do avoid a Focus Blast, we're getting quite lucky in this fight. Beautiful fucking We're literally out here cheating with the <laughs> with this fucking look. What is N's last Pokemon? Oh it's Kling Clang. Please no crit, I'll cry. Beautiful. There goes a crunch. Perfect, it's in the fetus. And then Gyro Ball is gonna go ahead and take out the Archeops. One Pokemon left and it's Kling Clang. Beam. Oh 
Almost broke my heart there. Almost broke my heart there. Alrighty. And that is N Deathless, baby. I'm expecting Protect. We go into the hacks first now. Nice. There's the heal. I set up Dragon Dance first. I should have taunted it. No, wait. I wanted to Protect. I wanted to Protect and Toxic. I have a Petra Berry. Taunt is actually a really bad move for me. I don't want to. I don't want to taunt it. There's two dragon dances. We're looking for toxic here. Beautiful. We have that Petra Berry. I could go at plus two, but because of rivalry, I need to get to plus six attack. I think so. We're gonna use two swords dance. I think. We really need. Oh, I got the double protect. They got the double protect. We're not going to get a sweep here. We just need the Hydreigon to come out. We need to kill the Hydreigon early. Wait, that's beautiful. I didn't think about Mummy. Man, I could have probably gone plus four. We just take out everything. I think we have two kills. Because I think we live this point. I think we live the next two poisons. Now we have double switch after this. Haxorus, you have been a f***ing legend, bro. Taking out three against this Pokemon. What a legend. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Toxic got to you. For the uh, Crocodile play. Because two, of course, actually beautiful. That's four times effect. This should kill. Beautiful. And we got the crit. Mm, I don't think we're in range to actually live. It'd be awesome if we did. Nice. Let's fucking go, Superior. We're in Overgrow. I'm going for the Leaf Blade. I doubt this kills, but we're going for it. Let's freaking go. What a Superior on its last limb. Superior, you have been the GOAT starter. You swept through an Elite Four member. You got the improbable Electros kill. And it's time for Miensha to end this thing. Miensha, one Drain Punch, and this thing is over. Right? Yep, it's over. Alrighty! Already. My bad about that. But yeah, my outro was terrible, so I need to do it again. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. If you guys watched all the way through, I'm still trying to get better at this whole post commentary thing, and I'm still trying to get better at this whole editing thing. So I can understand if this video was absolute, like, not like to quality of top Pokemon YouTubers, but I'm going to try to get better. Um, leave down in the comments what you guys thought of the video. If you guys enjoyed, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Leave comments down below for Pokemon stuff that you would like to see me do. And without further ado, thank you all for taking time out of your day. I suck at YouTube outros, and I'll see you all next time. Until then.